thanks to all of you for taking time out of your busy day to come and um, meet with me. I know it's heading towards the end of the day. For me, it's already dark. Um, but um, I thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, so let's start with um, talking about who Green Safaris is, and then um, we'll go on to chatting about our properties. So Green Safaris um, was founded by a gentleman called Vincent Kovenhoven. He lives in Netherlands, and um, he came to Africa as a young boy and fell completely in love, and specifically uh, with Zambia, and always vowed that one day he would come back uh, and give back to, to the country. And um, that's exactly what he did. So years later, he formed a foundation, and the foundation themselves decided, well, where do we want to be in terms of our foundation? So uh, the first two pillars, which is conserving your environment, protecting your wildlife, was where they wanted to be. Um, and how do you do that? Well, we all know that if you empower people, you, you know, poaching comes from poverty, crime comes from poverty. So you have to empower people in a really, really big way, not just provide them with lunch packs. You have to really, really get immersed in communities and drive home the empowerment in a very big way. And that's what they decided to do. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit about that just now. Um, and then obviously creating jobs is, is empowering people. So um, he went into tourism, which is um, very much one of the second big largest uh, incomes in Zambia. And um, yeah, and they, they decided, well, look, you know, we want to be green, we want to be sustainable, we want to work around our carbon emissions and our footprint. So what is luxury in that space? Um, is luxury a sprawling lodge with dripping silver and chandeliers? Or is that more about doing your imagination or around um, food, location, um, guides, um, service, et cetera? Um, and that's where the fourth pillar of our doing your imagination was born. So that's who we are in a nutshell. Um, we very much audited around our um, conservation. We have a, a website that's actually dedicated to our foundation called Green Safaris Foundation. And uh, we do get a audited report every year that goes back to the um, shareholders of the, of the fund. So it's very much, we have put our money where our mouth is. Uh, because, you know, somebody's looking all the time at, are we actually doing what we say we're doing? So that's really important. Uh, we don't just pay lip service to it. Um, this is just some of the uh, projects that we're involved in. Um, so when we talk about empowering people and creating jobs, yes, through tourism, 100%, but we also constantly have to look about how do we create jobs outside of our existing, uh, well, our community that surrounds our lodges. So in Livingston, um, you know, the chiefdom donated to some land and we've donated the funding. And now there's two organic gardens, um, not organic gardens, organic farms in Livingston, which obviously, as I said, empowers people because it gives them jobs. We have a chicken coop now that I think has about 3,000 chickens. So they're chicken farming now. And that's all about creating jobs. Um, and skill centers, we have one in Livingston, we have one in Kafui. So for those older adults who perhaps education has passed them by, education is a big one on our side. Uh, we, we help them create and build their skills so that they can use their skills to, to support their families. And again, empowering people through that way. Um, and also empowering people, not just through, through education, but also through uh, programs of, you know, how do you uplift young women? How do you support them? How do you, it's very much into women empowerment, et cetera. So this is just a little snapshot of, of all the wonderful things that, that, that they do. Going on to the actual um, properties and the map and how it all fits together, uh, we call it a sort of a dream circuit, if you will. Um, and it's a, a, basically a puzzle. You can decide, you know, do you want to do one property or do you want to do five properties? Do you want to only do three properties, et cetera? And we help you with the logistics of moving in between um, the lodges, uh, either through the flights or transfers or et cetera. We're the ones that can help you put that all together, um, either through your DMC or with talking to us directly and then going to your DMC, whichever you want to do. So currently here in Livingston, we have um, Tongabizi and Sindabizi Island. Um, Tongabizi was um, owned by Ben Parker, who passed away, unfortunately, in 2019. And, um, but he was already talking to us in 2018 around uh, 
the possibility of getting involved with our portfolio um, because he liked what he also, the, the story behind it, and he was moving very much in that direction. Um, Sindabizi Island was actually um, born out of needing to be more environmentally friendly, et cetera. And he was planning a greenhouse um, at Tongabizi before he passed away, which is very much still on the cards for us. Uh, COVID just slowed us down, unfortunately. Um, but that was one of the reasons also Greensboro has decided to get involved with these properties is because of what he stood for as well in terms of the community and uh, protecting the areas, et cetera. So Sindabizi is an island in the middle of the Zimbizi and Tongabizi is based on mainland. We also, um, with that came the concession for Livingston Island, which is where the Devil's Pool and the Angel's Pool is, and you can view the falls from an incredible, uh, uh, certainly at a different dimension of viewing the falls. Um, an hour by flight from Livingston um, to uh, the middle of the Kafui is Illa, sorry, is Illa, um, and um, Illa Safari Lodge was Green Safari's first um, lodge that Vincent built. Um, so very much, again, around those pillars that we were talking about. Um, you can road transfer from Lusaka to Illa. It's about a four and a half hour transfer. If you want to try and keep the costs down, or you can do a flight in from Lusaka. Again, it's about a 40 minute flight and it's an hour from, from, from um, Livingston. Then to um, Chisabizanga, you can either combine these two camps and, and do a 25 minute hop or you can go straight from Livingston directly to Chisa, which is um, an hour and a half, um, or from Lusaka to Chisa, which is uh, also just over an hour. So various ways you can skin a cat, as I say. Um, and then there's Pro Flight that flies Livingston to Lusaka, Lusaka to Mifubi to, to bring in Shawa into the circuit. Um, if you have, if you're chartering, or if you've got more than four people, you can charter. Uh, directly out of Ella or Chisa to, to Mifui, but if it's only two, then we would bring you back to Lusaka uh, and then a pro flight onto Mifui. Um, Skytrails does our flights here, but we subsidize the flight. So if you if you were getting a, a chart, there's no scheduled um, airline currently flying into to Kifui. Um, so we're hoping that will change with the pro flight because they did do that pre-COVID, but um, we use Skytrails and they produce quotes for um, minimum four, but we absorb two and we give you the minimum two to try. And that's if you're staying at a Green Safari's properties to try and encourage um, flights into this area. And again, it's a testament to the foundation needing to make sure there's bums and beds because bums and beds and vehicles on the ground help with anti-poaching. Also, the interesting thing about Kafui is that African Parks has just um, signed their big deal with the government to really, they, have, they were involved already, uh, with the old government, but they hadn't actually had this, the signature on the dotted line. And when the new government came in, that was the first thing they did. So there's um, a, a lot of money being pumped into Kafui at the moment in terms of um, the environment and anti-poaching and things like that, which is amazing. Um, just to give you an idea, that's sort of the size of Wales, if you want to put it in perspective. Um, then South, then Shawa and South Luangwa, as I said, and then we've got two flights that fly this area, um, uh, Pro Flight and Nyasa Air that fly Mifui to Lilongwe, and then daily Nyasa Air from Lilongwe up to Lakoma, uh, the island. This is an hour and this is an hour. So you can leave Shawa after breakfast and be at Lilongwe by lunchtime. I'm very happy to, for you to pop your questions into the Q&A and we can, have, we can have a look at that afterwards if you like. Um, I'm going to try and cover everything so you don't have any Q&As, but let's see. Um, so this is our, our rec rates for um, 2023, um, starting rec rates. We're obviously not aiming for just the multi-billionaire American. We want to also be able to um, speak to all areas uh, to offer something for everyone to be able to come and view these fantastic areas. Um, so, yeah, I think that the rec rates are testament to that. Um, incentives for 2023 at the moment, if you book, the more nights you book, the more um, percentage you earn over and above um, the contracted rates that you would have either with us or with your DMC. Um, so, it's a, you know, you can obviously pass that over to your clients if the client is budget conscious or however you want to do it. But so anything from five to six, ni six nights, you would earn additional 10%. Seven to nine nights, additional 20%, and then 10 nights or more, an additional 30%. So 
So, and you can easily using our circuit get to a 14 night itinerary without blinking. So um, that's it's quite a nice incentive for you to use the whole circuit. As I said, we subsidize the flights into, into um, Kafui. And then in the green season, we offer a stay for pay five at any particular property. You can't combine both you know, the, the, the incentives together. You have to choose one or the other. So talking about Livingston, Tongabizi, very, as I said, this is a property that we bought in 2020 from Ben Parker, who was uh, obviously did a lot to get this, top, this property on the map and it's very well known. And um, we have embarked at the beginning of 2022 on a massive refurbishment project of Tongabizi. Um, every door, every window, every roof, every pillow, everything was redone. It looks absolutely stunning. Um, we've, you know, everything that been introduced in terms of valets and private dining and all the quirky things that goes to Tonga Bizi is very much is still in play. We've done, we've just followed exactly the way he wanted it to be. Um, we have various types of rooms. We have river cottages, which is our entry level. Uh, we have the various houses. We have the open-ended tree house, which I'll show you. We have the various luxury houses, which have plunge pools. And then we have the double bedroom um, houses, which are great for children. And then the four bedroom sole use villa, again, great for generational travel or, or families traveling together. No closure of this lodge, open all year round, but there is quite a big green season. The high season sort of runs with the safari high season. Um, that's fairly, this is our river cottages. So these are the entry level rooms. Um, beautiful rooms. By the way, we will offer upgrades to houses if they are available when your clients check in. And you're welcome to check with us a few days before if you'd like. Um, th this is one of the views from the deck. So the river cottages don't have plunge pools, but the lodge itself has two main pools. So it's got one near the, which is heated, near the, the gym as well. And then we've got one near the lodges. So there's two lodge, there's swimming pools they can use. Um, but as I said, they don't have swimming pools themselves, but also have these beautiful decks where you can all do the same private dining you would do in the houses. Just some of our common areas, we don't have one main area, we have four different main areas. So there's always different you know, layers to discovering Tongabizi, which is fantastic. Um, this is Squeaky Sand Island across from Tongabizi, where we do a lot of our sundowner sand pans or picnic lunches. This is Honeymoon House. It does have its own ball and claw bath outside and, and plunge pool, nut house, and this is bird house. Very romantic, etc. This is dog house. This is the one bedroom here. And then it's got another bedroom across the way here and with a swimming pool in between. Rooms can be twins or doubles. We can put an extra bed in here if they wanted to have two families sharing this unit. It's got its own lounge dining area for four people. Um, or um, more, we do provide private chefs, private boats, et cetera, for this house. This is the garden house. It's the only room that doesn't have a river view. It's set back in the garden, but it's actually quite nice if you're traveling with smaller children. We do allow children of all ages, simply because if they want to make a noise and splash in the pool, they can, it's no problem. Um, it also, you don't have to worry about the river frontage if you're off having a private romantic dinner. Uh, I discovered when I traveled there with my kids when they were younger, um, it's this is the lounge dining area. This is actually the children's bedroom looking towards the lounge dining area there. So also big enough to put an extra bed in here as well. Um, you do need to check with us about the extra beds though, because we, we only have so many at the lodge. So it depends on, on, on what our bookings are. Open ended tree house. I always think this falls right in line with our doing your imagination and it's extremely romantic. Um, having this completely open um, and in, built into the rock and into a tree, which is a true tree house. And then Tangala House, which is undergoing refurbishment. Uh, it's a four bedroomed house. Um, so I don't have the most updated images with me, um, but it's got four bedrooms, three are en suite, and uh, one is a children's room with a bathroom across the hallway. So we get a lot of bookings for this with multi generational travel or two families that are traveling together that want to have their own space. It comes with its own chef and boat as well, and it's got its own swimming pool and viewing decks, etc. Uh, but it's right next to Tonga, so you can use the facilities at Tonga as well. You don't necessarily just have to stay at Tangala. Um, so Sundabizi Island, as I said, this is the environmental 
uh, lod lodge that Ben built. Um, it's downstream from Tongabizi, five uh, thatched chalets on board. Um, you know, it has all these little nooks and crannies that you can be an, a couple on board or you can be uh, a family that's taken the whole island. So if you have, if you take four of the rooms, you can take it exclusively. Um, you can have everything zipped up or everything zipped down. It's completely up to you and how adventurous you are. Um, I personally like to have everything up and feel and smell everything, but some people, you know, at night want to have everything zipped up. So we also do that. It's the same inclusions and exclusions you would get at Tongabizi. So, um, you know, all the sand pan dinners and the darboats, which I'll show you just now, you also have here from this island and valets. Uh, this is some of the, the decoration that comes from our skill centers. Uh, so we do support them as much as we can in terms of putting their decor into our lodges. So dining, Ben always made dining and we continue that ethos in making dining an, an activity. So whether it's, you know, picnic on an island, um, these sandbars that they set up at sunset, which you arrive back from your sundowners or from your fishing and you can have pims and proper snacks, et cetera, and meet some of the other people there before you head off to your private um, uh, dining, or you can have it privately if you want. Um, and to the sand pans, which we moor 100 meters offshore, and you can have your dinner on there, to the dow boats that you chug down the river having lunch on board. These are all included activities in the rate that we offer. And the only lodge actually to offer all of these quirky things. And then we're moving on to Livingston Island. So this is the falls. For those of you who don't know, this is Livingston Island here, and it can only be accessible from Zambia. You'd board it upstream on a boat, and then they bring you downstream uh, to the island, and um, we have uh, th uh, three, sorry, five departures a day, three all early morning breezes, which serve breakfast, and then we have the high tea and the lunch. And it's where Dr. Livingston first viewed the fall, so it is a national um, heritage site, not heritage site, it was a national park site for the Zambians. Um, this side here is Zambia, and this side is Zimbabwe. However, when I talk about the falls, I talk about it as a whole, because it is a whole. <laughs> there's, there's sort of an imaginary line that runs down the middle of the river. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, not obviously, maybe not obviously, but Zambians, the Zambian government has waived a lot of the visas for a lot of countries now. So you don't need to pay for visas to come into Zambia. But if you wanted to go view the falls across on the Zim side, you can, you just pay a $10 day visa fee. So it's very easy to move from one side to the other, and that can all be booked um, with us. So depending on what time of the year it is, obviously low water, this island comes available, and this is the gem on top of the island. But then, of course, this section is a little bit dry, so then you want to come across and view the falls on this side, you can do that. And you can combine that in a day by going and doing the, the Livingston Island and then going across to doing the tour of the falls and actually be back by lunchtime, to be fair. So this is just another view. This is Devil's Pool that sits here. You can swim in the Victoria Falls, and then I think the best way to see the falls. Uh, it's it's absolutely something a bucket list thing that you should put forward. And guides are highly trained and very safe. We've never ever had an incident here, um, despite <laughs> googling and finding something. It was actually not at this venue. It was at another point on the falls and it had nothing to do with Livingston Island. So there's never ever been any incidences here at Livingston Island and it's extremely popular. So don't wait for your clients to book this when they get there because they won't get in. Then up at Illa in the middle of the Kafui, um, just to show you a little bit of a map of Kafui. So um, Illa being in the central area and then just uh, Basanga camp being up or Chisa Basanga being up in the Basanga swamps. So very similar to the Delta, and I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, amazing game up there as well. Um, as I said, uh, African Parks is doing an incredible job here, for both from an anti-poaching, also from a communication perspective. So part of anti-poaching is putting up radio towers and having all the lodges, you know, being able to talk to each other. So, um, you know, that helps very a lot with uh, uh, anti-poaching. So that's what they're involved in. So that's great. Um, yeah, incredible stuff that they've done. When we started building Basanga, they only they had they, the the last count was nine lines up there. I think they're up to thirty nine lines now in that area. So uh, it's quite uh, incredible what they've done. Also, there's Panthera projects that are also involved in uh, Kafu as well. It's fascinating. They do come to talk to you if you if you want if your clients want. 
Um, so just always remember that any of our community projects, your clients can visit or get involved in or support or et cetera. But again, this is the front view. In Zambia, there are two rivers that you can traverse, one being Kafui River and the other being the Zambezi River. Um, this Luangwa River, you cannot. There's too many quick, uh, hippos and crocs uh, on those rivers, so you can't do proper river activities on them. Um, so the two rivers that you can is Kafui River and Zambezi River. So with that, the Illa has actually evolved into just more than just being a, a game lodge, driving lodge, if you will. Ten tents, um, two family tents and two with outdoor bathtubs. Um, there is a, a period that we closed because it's rainy season and there's no point. You will just get stuck in mud. So we do close over that period and use that time to do refurbishments, et cetera, on the lodges. Built off the ground, um, totally solar, um, built with as much ventilation through the tents as possible. Um, so you're not, not reliant on air conditioning because that we are solar. Um, as I said, these are the baths that sit out um, on the decks. And this is the family unit here, in the family bathroom. So we opposite the, we in a game management area opposite the Kafu, we do pontoon across. So we do not have to drive to the gate, clear the gate, get into the park, et cetera. We pontoon straight across and that makes a massive difference. Uh, as I said, we, we're not um, all just about driving in a vehicle because of this beautiful river. And by the way, we have electric vehicles that comes to our carbon footprint. Um, it's very important that everything is, including our boat is run off solar which is here. So as I said, and you'll see there's the pontoon guys getting on board here. So it's not all just about the game driving a vehicle, it's also about game driving on the boat and also perhaps just experiencing a, a sundowner trudging down the river, stopping, having your, your, your sundowner bar set up on the side of the banks of the river. Um, we also do private lunches on this boat. So just like Tonga Bizi, we've taken that ethos into creating, making meals and activity as well whether it be on that boat, which is, as you can see, obviously is run by solar, or whether it be a, a brunch in the bush or breakfast in the bush, et cetera, um, uh, very much a part of, of, uh, of Ella. We also have a floating spa. So just like Tonga has got this floating dinner, we now have a floating spa at Ella. And then up to Chisa Bisanga, um, Vincent came and camped in the Bisanga Plains and was camping under the tree and came up with the idea of building these nests up there because obviously the discussion was around how do we really honor this pristine environment at the same time build something that outdoes one's imagination and, you know, as I said, is, doesn't leave a massive carbon footprint behind. And this is how he came up with this idea of these nests. There's only four of them. Um, it only opens a certain time of the year because we'll talk about that now, but it's open from the 1st of June to the 15th of November, but it's high season is the 1st of July to the 31st of October. And so this whole area here is a lake throughout the year. And then the water recedes and you get this amazing lush green grass that comes out and there's sort of an annual migration of animals up into this area. And so you end up with hundreds of, you know, a game sitting up here. I mean, I was up there in November 2020 and my jaw just hung on the ground. It was, I just saw herds of roan and sable and buffalo and hundreds of storks just sitting on the ground near the tributary that ends up running through. And I'll show you a picture of that. And birds of prey, you know, from brown snake eagles to battalions to fish eagles, all of them just sitting on the ground. Um, it was absolutely incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, we saw 14 lions just in the drive from the airport to the, to the lodge. It was amazing. They have amazing wild dog sightings here, big packs of wild dogs that come in here because it's great for them for hunting and also cheetah. So um, just really a little gem that nobody knows about that I think gives a lot of other areas a run for their money in terms of game viewing. Um, one of our nests have a lift. Again, we're also run off solar uh, that can take you up to the top. Um, you can operate it yourself or you can get the ballets to operate it for you. Very compact. Um, that was actually the first picture we ever made of it. This is the second picture, the newest one. So we have these air breezes now installed in the nests. Um, so for those of you who don't know what an air breezer is, it's just a air conditioner that is adapted to be able to run off solar. So it doesn't drain a lot of power. Um, and it's amazing because it allows you to have that lovely cool afternoon nap uh, during the hotter months. 
um, and that's made a massive difference to, to the nests. Um, because they're quite up high, they're not necessarily under tree canopy, so they definitely needed to have the air breezes in them. Um, so yeah, very compact in shower basin, toilet, beautiful views out. You can have the just the black gauze zipped up, which is um, yeah, it's a it's a gauze that allows like a mosquito net basically that comes down and, and zips up, also over the door area, or you can have everything totally zipped up. It's up to you. Because we only have eight guests in camp, we didn't need to build a massive big main area. Um, and you'll see again, it's about the footprint. So it doesn't even have a permanent floor. Uh, even the walls were done with sisal um, sandbags with organic paints. And we've stayed we've stayed to the homage of natural fibers, etc. When doing the decor as well. Um, there's a live cooking station behind here, and this is the view from that cooking station, um, looking out into this incredible plains, which is amazing. Um, and we have little, this is the area we meet in the morning before you have your tea and coffee and sit around the fire before you head out on your either walk or your or your game drive. And then we have a little swimming pool for um, cooling off. Again, we don't put um, chlorine and acid in these pools. We actually pump them. So we don't put chlorine and acid into or pump it that back into a pristine environment. You have to think about that if you're green. Um, Bomas that this one is actually an open room on the one side for dinners at night. Um, and then electric vehicles as well. So it's four to a vehicle here. Um, at Cinderbizi Island and at Chisa and at Shawa, we only allow children nine and over. At all the all the other lodges, we do allow all ages. Um, again, it's only eight people, so we put four to a vehicle, which is important, and it is electric vehicles. And somebody asked me in the previous presentation are these 100% electric or hybrids? They are 100% electric. Um, they are, they, we don't have any electricity um, at the lodges at all, so that everything has to be charged up with solar. So you can imagine our size of our solar farm is quite big. So this is the tributary I was talking about, and you actually can see one of the bacillus or stalks, or whatever. I can't actually see that far now. But um, so again, you get this tributary that runs through, and that's what, and all the game comes down to this little tributary and eats that lush grass around it. So yeah, the game viewing is absolutely amazing. We have electric bikes that you can use to around the camp. So if you want to work off your breakfast or your dinner or your lunch, um, you can take an electric bike and go and ride around the area. We also do all the romantic things that you would imagine in terms of the sundowners in the bush, et cetera. So anything that your client you know, wants from a private perspective, we can certainly help them. This is just some images taken by some of our guests that have been there. Yes, I said, I can't emphasize enough how incredible the game viewing is here. I don't think you're any client would be disappointed with their safari here. Um, Shawa, we've spoken about how you get there. Um, Shawa is situated, Sorry, 40 minutes from uh, Mafui Airport. Uh, we don't go through the gate to get involved in all the stuff that happens here. We actually move south, uh, north and we end up uh, um, near the Insefi sector or in the Insefi sector. So we do game drives in the Insefi sector and in um, South Tawangwa, so both sections. Um, and we also pontoon across to the main area or the, into um, South Tawangwa. So, as I said, we don't have to go through the gates or get involved with anything there. And the, and the importance of that is we end up being, you know, sometimes the only vehicles in sightings. And again, it's not a big camp. Um, it has uh, four, actually got five tents, but the one tent is a family tent with a double tent. So if it's a family that's in the unit, we end up with 10 people in camp. But if not, it's eight people in camp. Also has a, a closure or an opening season. Um, high season, you know, with like all the others, uh, uh, but green season slightly longer than um, Chisipazanga. So again, not a permanent structure, built high off the ground. Um, this, there's two levels to our main area here. We, again, we don't need a big one because we don't have a lot of people in our camp. Um, it's, it's a lot more intimate, great chef here, brilliant guides, trained under Jacob Shower, who was head guide of Robin Pope which is the, he actually chose the site for us and which is where, why it's named after him. Um, just absolutely amazing guiding. Um, I just, I never wanted to get off the vehicles. The humor and the passion of which they give you, tell you stories is, is amazing. 
We have little um, sunset Boma area here. Um, we don't necessarily have dinner down here because there's elephants through here all the time. So we do have, we did raise the pool area a bit so we could do our continental breakfasts there before you go out and drive. Um, but then dinners are up on the deck. It's just the upper deck area. Um, so this is another view of continental breakfast. So game, the game drives are done a little bit different here. You actually do have a continental breakfast and then you go out either on your walk or on your game drive. Sometimes ending up with brunch in the bush, or you come back uh, and have uh, your breakfast and then ending up with brunch or high tea or whatever as the program goes through the day. Um, that's just another view of the little fire pit down the bottom. So these are the, the, t the, t the tents again, or the nests, or the tree houses, however you want to call it. Um, so again, you've got the black gauze uh, mosquito net that you can either have all zipped up or all open, uh, I mean zipped down or all open, or, or you can have the canvas rollaways in place, which you'll see here. There's a canvas rollaway here that comes over, um, or you can have everything down, the flaps down, depending how adventurous your client is, and the valets will do all of that for them. Very compact as well, basin, toilet, um, basins are behind you, toilet there, bath here, and then you've got your shower out here. We are going to be building a second bath, a toilet outside, um, because this toilet is a little bit small. So if you're a tall person, you could have a problem. So we've realized that. So we now are going to be putting in for the next season um, a toilet outside on the deck as well. Well, obviously not <laughs> open to the, to the elements, but yeah, that people can use outside. Um, this is the family um, tent. Um, so our tents are not this close. It's just because this is a family tent. So when, that's why this one makes up the 15. Electric vehicles as well here, also four to a vehicle, unless there's a family in camp, then it'll be six and four. Uh, brunches in the bush, as I said. Beautiful walks. Um, the Luangwa really, really lends itself to walking because of these incredible sandbanks that you can walk along. Um, they do also set up our sundowner bars on these banks, and it's amazing to watch the sun set in the dusk uh, and the dust that comes up, and then these millions of carmine bee eaters coming into nest along the banks here. It's quite something to see. Um, as I said, home to the walking safari. So then by breakfast, you can jump on a plane and be the long way to, to Kayamawa. Very quick and easy. Mifu Airport's very small, very easy to maneuver as is the long way, but we meet you off those flights and then onto uh, Lacoma Island, which has a tiniest little uh, airport, which is very cute. Um, this is actually a map of Lacoma Island. And uh, we are situated in an oxbow here of the island, but um, you can, you know, can traverse this whole um, island. It is big enough, as I said, for an airstrip. We have a solar farm, organic farm on here as well, and very much involved with the community and uplifting this community. We have just actually introduced a ferry that connects the island to the mainland, um, but does obviously take a few hours to get from a long way to the ferry, but it's so good for the community to be able to move backwards and forwards uh, if they want. Um, so here is the Oxbow. Uh, this is our little spa here, and I'll show you another picture of it. I think the pictures itself doesn't do this place justice. Uh, I've been here twice, the first time with my son, and he cried when we left. And he was 11 years old, so it definitely is a family destination as well as a romantic destination. Um, also, Light Tongabizi has some entry-level rooms, which is your standard rooms, and then we move into standard families, and then the premier rooms, which have pools, and then the premier houses, um, some of which are, are family as well. So um, two-bedroom unit families, as well as then Domo Soul Use House, which has got four bedrooms. Um, it is open from the 31st of March through to the 3rd of January. From the 3rd of January, we enter into rainy season or what they call monsoon season, or like I'm sure some of you have heard about Cyclone Freddy coming off from Madagascar over this time of the year. It's very normal. Lots of high rainfall over Southern Hemisphere at this time of the year. Um, so we close and we also use that time to do re refurbishments. This is actually the proper view that you see. It's, it's this blue, 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 crystal clear waters, you feel like you're actually in the Seychelles, but it's it's the most amazing beach destination. The water is this constant 24 degrees. 
and it's fresh, it's not salt, it's an amazing. So you've got this massive swimming pool in front of you, which is absolutely incredible. Um, somebody asked me in the previous presentation, um, is there hippos and crocs? No, they're not. Um, Malawi is one of the seven great Rift Valley lakes. Um, it's the last one in the, the lakes that come down. The fish that you get in here, you'll find in many aquariums around the world. That's where it comes from, the freshwater aquariums. Um, there are crocodiles and hippos, but way south. And if you look at this island uh, map, this, uh, this, this, this lake is massive, absolutely huge. Um, if some of you look at the map of, um, let's quickly go back here, I'll show you. That's the, uh, I mean, it's absolutely huge. It's practically the size of a country. And if you consider this is the size of Wales, then consider how big that is. So it's absolutely massive. So if they are down south, uh, which they are down in the southern area of the, um, the lake, you're not going to get them up north. And there hasn't, there aren't any up north. And believe you me, I asked when my 11 year old went snorkeling with me. So um, yeah, very much sort of the shabby chic beach style, which I love. Um, it's 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 undergone a refurbishment, half of it during lockdown and the other half at the beginning of 2022. The, it's app, you, you do 100% forget you're looking at a lake and rather than an ocean, you constantly feel that you're in a, uh, on, a, on, on the ocean. That's our little spa. So every room is different. It was built by many years ago by the community by hand, every stone. Um, so you'll see some of the vaults are standing up, some are sunken, some are freestanding, some are tiny little tucked into little rocks, um, but every room is different. For a reason, some of the, sta the standard rooms don't have pools, but they've got their big pool, as I say, in front of them. They've all got these beautiful decks running out and the ladders that take you straight out into the lake. Um, very colorful. A lot of the stuff comes from our skill center. All these beaded chandeliers, etc., come from our skill center. Some of the rooms with the pools. Just, I've got a picture of my son sitting in that bath. <laughs> So I have great memories of Kaimaya. When I went back in November, it, it reminded me exactly why I fell in love with it then as well. So um, absolutely stunning. I mean, here are some of the recycled glass chandeliers that we've done. This is another, this is our family, another family unit, premier family unit with a swimming pool down the bottom. And then in Doma House, which has um, four bedrooms as well. This is actually their viewing deck out on on the island there, um, got a private section of island, comes with its own chef and boats and et cetera as well. So activity wise, snorkeling, you can just take the dial boat and chug around having your fishing and snorkeling and then stopping to have a lunch on a sandy beach. It's very relaxed. Um, or you can go do all the adrenaline stuff, which is um, risking, um, tubing, kite surfing, et cetera. Or, you know, learning how to sail a boat or paddle or canoe or go for it, a uh, really strong canoe if you want to have an, do an activity that's, I don't know, fitness level, keep your fitness levels up. Um, because the, the lake is flat, it's wonderful for children to be able to do that, to learn to sail or any of that thing, that, that stuff. It's really amazing. Um, and Doma House is actually around this bend. So um, as is the skill center as well. So when my son and I, we actually canoed all the way around when we did some retail, I did some retail shopping. Electric bikes for you to take and go and, and tour the community. They've got this incredible missionary, the, a church that missionaries built years ago. It's still standing. You can go and visit, which is amazing. And then this is just a little view of our skill center. As I said, you can go along and do some shopping. You can, they've got a little shop there that has all of their cushion covers and, and table runners, etc. Or you can order a chalet, I think a chandelier, I think this one here, which is recycled copper and glass was commissioned by someone in the UK that was boxed up and sent to them. Uh, very rudimentary the way they do it with wine bottles in this PVC pipe and they, they, they end up with this incredible. And then they also do um, chandeliers with termite mud where they make the little beads and then they color them either white or purple, blue or um, black whatever you want, and they, make, they can bes make bespoke chandeliers, which is absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, and that's us. Um, I see there's one question in here. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> uh, 
Um, are there, if there is any other questions, you're most welcome to um, get hold of me. My email address is ros at um, greensafaris.com. Um, so you're most welcome to get hold of me and chat to me if you need any, any questions or you want any access to our agents portal. We have an agents portal with images and fact sheets and all sorts of uh, things that you need to help do your job. We have a newsletter that goes out and our newsletter is very clear. We do not put all sorts of nonsense on it. It's very, it's just information for you. It's updating you like, you know, park fees have increased or visas have been dropped or here's our access to our new website or whatever, the information that you would need to do your job. So please do have a look at it. Um, Tessa, you're most welcome to send me an email and I will definitely uh, get a copy of the presentation sent to you, no problem. Um, so yeah, so please connect with me and chat to me if you need any other information, you're most welcome. It's ros at greensafaris.com. And so thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules. I know I've taken a little bit longer than half an hour and I hope I've inspired you to sell Zambia and Malawi. And um, yeah, we'll chat again soon. <laughs>